Okay, so about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I watched it in theaters and I gotta say, that movie is awesome. It was spectacular. It's a perfect sequel. It's a 10 out of 10. The animation was awesome. The ending was awesome. I got to watch it in theaters. That movie was freaking awesome, bro. That movie was freaking like, I can't read that. I'm gonna hype this. I watched the day one in theaters when it came out of my area and it's been some time since that day and I can't really reenact my hypeness I had when I left the theaters. But I gotta say, when I left that theater after watching this movie, I was pretty hyped, right, man. And it was like, this movie just, just a really great freaking movie, man. Like this is like a perfect sequel. And before, you know, I'll talk about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, I guess I could give my like quick thoughts on Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and a little funny story and it's made sound kind of bizarre. So I really love the Raimi movies. I really fuck with the Tasm movies and I really, really like the MCU Spider-Man movies. But for some odd reason, okay. So I watched Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse with my friends in theaters day one when it came out in 2018. And when I rewatched the movie, right? I rewatched it the day for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse for the second time ever. <laughs> and this, like, okay, okay. So when I first saw the movie, I thought it was just a really great movie. And I wasn't like, I don't know if it was just, I don't know what's wrong with me, but like, I wasn't amazed by the animation because I guess because I watched DC animated movies and I watch animated shows and anime and Overall, I watch animated stuff, so I wasn't really like amazed by it. I thought it was just a really great movie that happened to be animated, you know? And when I watched it again for a second time ever, bro, what the hell was wrong with me? <laughs> I'm watching this movie. I'm like, damn, it's a really great movie. <laughs> why, did I, why didn't I ever watch this movie? Yeah, it's inspired by the really great movie. I'm glad I watched it again to refresh some memories of it because I don't know what was wrong with me. Like, that was an L right there. I should have been me watch this movie so many times ago. Like, this is ridiculous. But yeah, but Into Spider-Verse is a really great movie. I really like that movie. Like, I'm planning on rewatching it again. And um, I really like the whole movie's plot. I like the soundtrack. I like the action that was in it. I like the, of course, the animation was great in the movie. And overall, I really fucked with the movie. And I, I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't like bandwagoning Miles Morales from that movie, but after watching it for a second time, now I see why people were, were bandwagoning him slash, you know, really fuck with the character and actually like him overall. And after seeing Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which I'm about to get into in a second, now I see why people consider Miles Morales their favorite Spider-Man, because this guy is really freaking good. And yeah, so... A little funny weird story right there so yeah all right now before i get into spoilers i'm not gonna say spoilers yet for spider-man across the spider-verse because okay so i don't know what's real spoiler because i watched trailer one one time and that was it i didn't watch trailer two or the third one because i was like i want to like not get spoiled or spoil myself even though when it comes to marvel and sony i can trust them when it comes to their trailers i'm like you know dc and warner bros like i love dc and all but like bro they, they love to spoil the entire fucking movie and the goddamn trailers which got me scared to watch trailers now because of them but but that's not the point uh another reason was you know because of that but the other reason is mainly because uh i don't know i just wanted to watch the movie with like a fresh like take on it i didn't want to like know what's gonna happen before it happens or get an idea what may happen because of the trailers so i don't really remember what was in the trailers so the best I can say without spoiling is this movie's awesome. It's a perfect sequel, basically a 10 out of 10. And it's definitely worth watching in theaters. Like I'm very grateful I watched this movie in theaters, had the time to watch it in theaters. This movie is awesome, it's amazing. Like I don't know what to say what everybody else probably was said about this movie. This movie's just awesome, okay? It's definitely worth it and if you really like the Miles character from the first movie, you're really, really gonna love what happens with Miles in this movie. And that's pretty much all I can say. So, yeah. All right, enough of the non-spoilers. Now I'm gonna get into spoilers. All right, so for spoilers, 
All right, another thing. I'm not trying to talk for like 50 million years, so I'm trying to make this as short as possible. <laughs> so yeah. All right, so Gwen Stacy. I really, 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 really like Gwen Stacy in this movie. Her storyline was really dope. Like freaking, when they showed her uh, point of view, or not point of view, her like storyline basically in our universe, she's all like sad and somber and depressed over now, you know, not seeing Miles and other Spideys and stuff, right? And what's kind of cool in our universe, it's like a, like a paint splash of coloring in her universe, right? So when they show Gwen, they show like somber colors, like blue and stuff. But when she, you know, finally gets that happiness from hanging out with our dad, it li it lights up to like reddish orange or whatever, like bright colors. Let her know that, hey, she's happy now type shit. But like when they added on more to her origin story with her and Peter, it was like, wow, that's, that's kind of sad right there. Holy cow. I say that mainly because, you know, Peter's getting bullied, you know, generic nerd gets bullied by the bigger guy or whatever. But like the thing about Peter in this universe is that he's really smart. This nigga went out his way to create lizard venom to turn him to a lizard to kill his bully and, you know, become special like Gwen and shit like that, which he revealed before he passed away and shit. Uh, and what made it even crazier that they literally showed this nigga wearing a lizard um, costume for Halloween during like the flashbacks of her origins between her and Peter. And that was like, dang, that's that's crazy right there. And then, you know, when she killed him, freaking her, she didn't realize that was Peter. So, of course, she didn't know. But the thing is, like, when her father came across her around Peter, you know, pretty much passed away he assumed that she killed him and his whole goal is pretty much to take her down and arrest her and it's like dang that's that's her father wanted her to go to jail for life type shit it was like damn but as time goes on it's back to you know back to the present where she's all sad and somber um so she goes out you know do her spider woman work and she comes across an alternate universe vulture. And you know, as she's taking on this alternate universe vulture, two Spider-Man variants come through a portal to pretty much assist taking down that vulture as well. Um, I don't know her name, so I'm just gonna call her the pregnant Spider-Woman on a motorcycle. And she, you know, she comes through being a badass on a motorcycle. And then the other Spider-Man is Spider-Man 2099 or Miguel, which I am very glad they did him justice in this movie because I really fuck with that Spider-Man 2099. And, um, which is a very cool Spider-Man, by the way. Um, you know, they fight the Vulture and then they eventually, you know, defeat it with teamwork and shit. Um, they witness how great Gwen is as a Spider-Woman uh, type shit, right? And so, as you know, as the battle is, you know, done, she runs out of webs, right? And so she, you know, needs to escape. Her father comes across her and basically wants to arrest her. And so he's like, just ready to arrest Spider-Woman and all that good shit. So Gwen's goal was to try her best to get out of the situation the best she could. So she takes off her mask and she tells him that, hey, I'm your daughter. This man's still like, everything you say will be due to the court of law. Put your hands up and I'm like, damn that is crazy that was a tearjerker right there i didn't you know i didn't cry but that's a that's a tearjerker right there and i saw that i'm like damn that's that's fucked up but damn but and then and then in way even worse is that it's like that was her last source of happiness like that's what made it even more effed up that was her last source of happiness and she had to leave that she had to leave her whole universe and then she got and then the thing is she got lucky to even leave her universe because she displayed that she's a really great spider uh, woman and stuff like that to leave with miguel and the pregnant spider woman on the motorcycle and man and you know other than that part of the movie uh her whole storyline is just as big as miles morales storyline in this movie and from how she was in this movie i am very curious what they're gonna do for her in the sequel after this movie and speaking of, you know, Miles Morales, Miles Morales, I'm not gonna lie. 
I ain't gonna lie. I, I don't want to bandwagon, but I, now I'm starting to see why people bandwagoned him from Into the Spider Verse. And not just bandwagon, but I actually genuinely seen his character and genuinely liked him and considered him their favorite Spider Man. Stuff like that. Now I see why. And so, like, my favorite uh, Spider Man is the Andrew Garfield Spider Man. And I always seen people like debate between Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire Spider Man. And it's like, we all know Tom Holland Spider Man is the best Spider Man dog. He's the best one. But even though, like, Andrew Garfield's better, we all know Tom Holland's better. But, anyways, besides that, uh, I'm like, depending on the sequel for Beyond the Spider Verse, high key, I think Miles may become my favorite Spider Man. I'm not gonna lie. I ain't trying to bandwagon. It's that this character is really well written. He's really well written. He's a badass. He has cool abilities. Not to mention his suit is my favorite color is red and black. And overall, this character is actually really good. So I ain't gonna, I think he may become my favorite Spider-Man. But not yet. I'm not gonna rush to it. I'm gonna wait until the Beyond the Spider-Verse, because I don't wanna rush to it. I see how that movie ends and how it deals with him and stuff. But yeah, um, yeah, but about about Miles uh Morales. Like to see his development from the first movie to this movie, this man gotten way better with his abilities. He's more uh fluent as a Spider-Man variant. And when it gets oh yeah, also I'm going out of order in this movie. I'm not really going in the specific order of the plot. I'm just talking what comes to mind. But um this man, Miles, get told by Miguel that he wasn't even supposed to be a Spider-Man. That's crazy to hear. This man, Miles, put in all this work to master his abilities, to get better as a Spider-Man, do his best as Spider-Man in Brooklyn, and all this good stuff just to hear that he wasn't even supposed to be a Spider-Man. That spider was supposed to bite a whole different universe, Miles. And that's crazy. That's crazy to hear right there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So basically, how we got to this point, to that reveal, is basically that while Miles is with the other Spider-Man variants in the Spider-Man headquarters, um, Miguel is explaining Miles the multiverse and the concept of time and the flow of what goes on in the universe should never be interrupted. If it gets interrupted, it, the universe gets destroyed. Basically, this was shown in What If and Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness, which is also kind of cool that Miguel explains the multiverse of Arya and the multiverse stuff in these movies, but he explains the multiverse in his movie very well and easy to like understand, basically. And as they showing it and explaining the multiverse in this movie, they showing clips from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man and the Tasm movies and other stuff like the MCU. And it's like, wow, this is so now, like now I think about it. Into the Spider-Verse is connected to the MCU now because when they showed the threads of time, it was literally the, the white threads that they showed in Loki. And when they showed a universe basically about to get destroyed or well, and got destroyed with that uh, black gooey stuff, that was from What If. That was kind of crazy. This movie's part of MCU now. Wow, that's a cool thought right there. Yeah, but um, yeah, but as he explained that to him, he pretty much tells Miles and Miles tells him that uh he said he saw a vision of his father about to die and miguel and all the other spider-man variants knows about it and when he tells him that he's like dog you're not he tells him that dog you can't interrupt this this that flow of time if you do that you destroy the universe and miles doesn't want that to happen and that's how you know we get him to take on all the spider-man variants and then that's where we get to the part where Miles gets told the big reveal that he wasn't even supposed to be a Spider-Man to begin with. And that was crazy right there. Also, so as this, you know, big reveal is happening. So Miguel has Miles pinned on a train, you know, pretty much telling them the big news that isn't big news, bad news. Um, Miles has this face, right? I can't really explain it, but he has him pinned on the train, right? Miles has this face. He's like, nah, nah, hell nah. You know who the fuck I am? I'm Miles Morales. I'm a real nigga. Like, I can't really explain it, but I'm gonna put the face on the screen as I'm editing. And he pretty much displays that he's a badass. 
And just because he wasn't meant to be a Spider-Man, he wanted to show him that he put in that work and pretty much shows that, you know, you're not technically supposed to be a Spider-Man. He shows showing it that he, he's he uh he's meant to be a Spider-Man. And uh, I don't know if I explained it right, but he pretty much like a freaking badass. And um, I mean, like, as you can hear, I really fuck with Miles. Um, Miguel, the 2099 Spider-Man, I really, like, I'm, I'm really glad they actually did him just in this movie. Because, like, it's, it's kind of funny that he's literally, like, the only serious character in this movie. Where, like, everybody's cracking jokes about stuff. He's calling out BS and calling stuff stupid. And which it is stupid, but it's like all the other Spider-Mans are, like, cracking jokes about it. And he's like, that's freaking stupid. And then when you realize his stuff that he mentioned is also stupid, like, damn. That's also stupid as well. And like, I know, it's pretty cool. And then the way he is in this movie, I think they kind of held him back in this movie because there was a scene, right, as they're fighting that alternate uh, universe vulture uh, character, right? He was about, to, I ain't gonna lie, I think he was about to kill him because he was about to bite him with his fangs and stuff in this movie. He's pretty much, everybody's holding him back, right? They all, they all when, they, when he revealed the the bad news to Miles, all the other Spider-Man were like, hey, yo, chill, this wasn't the plan, you're supposed to keep it calm. And he's super serious about it. But thing is, I think if they weren't there to tell him you know, to chill, he probably would have been more cold-blooded towards Miles. And I got a feeling in the next movie, Beyond the Spider-Verse, we're going to see how really serious this guy can really be and how deadly he could be type stuff. So, um, yeah. Um, other than that, I want to ramble on for too long. But, uh, yeah, the animation in this movie was really great. Um, I re I'm just so glad they made the characters flow, like, fluently other than all choppy and stuff. Um, the soundtrack in this movie was really great. Like, um, I plan on downloading the entire soundtrack to work out to, like, dead ass. I'm starting to get back into the gym now, and this soundtrack sounded pretty dope to, like, work out with. And, um, I really like the plot line of the movie. And speaking of the plot line, that character, the spot, right? When I saw the trailer, I thought the spot was just gonna be, like, a one off villain, right? Like, Miles going to feed him go to you know go to class and shit like that and yada 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 dog they made the spot i don't know if anybody said this before but they made the spot more villainous more threatening more of like an absolute like like antagonist they made him more villainous than kane the conqueror who the fuck does that they made a fucking spot nigga more threatening than Kane the Conqueror. This is a family, this is a family movie and they made a nigga with spots who can like have holes in dimension and shit more threatening than Kane. This make a travel in the multiverse. He can get stronger by absorbing multiversal like energy type shit, right? And then, and then his goal, when his goal, or whenever he gets chance to kill somebody, right? If you prevent that nigga from getting killed, you destroy the universe by proxy. That is freaking crazy. And then, we makes it worse. He's he's literally, he is literally Miles' like nemesis. And for a nemesis, that's pretty great. That's pretty great. He's pretty great because his goal is to kill Miles' father. And it makes it kind of uh, crazy about Miles' parents, which I really fuck with the mom. The mom had a lot of screen time, and she liked her dialogue and stuff she mentioned about uh, her son and towards her son. I liked his, I really fucked with his pops and how he's like feeling over how Miles is, is as a character overall. You know, since he's keeping a secret from them, there's like a little, uh, little like tension, I guess, like tension or something like that towards him and his parents and it's kind of interesting that his last words to his father were like negative negative stuff and towards his mom was more positive and there's a possibility if the spot succeeds the last things his father and miles had was negative and depend if that's if that happens in the in the in the beyond the spot that's going to be crazy right there and it's, it's really crazy how the spot 
is a really great villain. Like he's more of a villain than Kane the Conqueror. That that, that is I'm repeating it because that is mind blowing right there. That's that crazy. Um, what else? Um, what else was? Dog, that freaking okay. So that ending, right? So the ending didn't hit me that hard compared to everybody in my theaters. So like, cause like when I saw Into the Spider Verse that year, 2018, I already got like the heads up that they plan on making Across the Spider Verse and Beyond the Spider Verse. But as I'm watching this movie, right, when we hit the two hour mark, I'm looking at my phone for the, at the time and shit. I'm like, dog, how? What the fuck? They they doing a lot. Like this man, Miles in a whole different universe. Cause when you, when you escape the uh, when you outsmarted Miguel and other Spider-Man variants on a train after pretty much showing how much a badass he is, when he gets transferred to a different universe, we all thought. Well, I thought he went to his universe to explain to his folks that he on Spider-Man, bad stuff was happening. But the dang teleporter sent him to the universe where the spider bit him from, and then Gwen's up here. Uh, Got sent back to her universe because she stood up against Miguel, something that the other spider man probably wanted to do, but never did it because, you know, Miguel's actually a really pretty powerful spider, Spider-Man variant, and he's pretty much the leader of all this stuff and has, you know, all the technology and yada, yada, yada to say so. And pretty much say what all the other spider man could have said to Miguel, that, hey, Miguel, you're being a dick, bro. Like, like, bro, like, what are you doing? And he said, Get the fuck out of here, bitch! And he sent her back to our universe. And I'm thinking, dang, now she's in our universe. Now she's gonna be on a run until something happens in the next movie or whatever. But no, um, when she gets to our universe, her and our dad pretty much makes up. Uh, her dad learns from his prior mistakes of choosing being a cop other than being a father. And he quits being a cop while Gwen decides to be more, not decides, pretty much opens up more to a, to our father and then they pretty much make up and then after that his father reveals that he had like a teleporter thing from the uh the spider punk which oh yeah spider punk is actually really cool like he's pretty cool with the mask and without the mask and freaking uh a uh, little little ramble right here so as i'm watching the movie freaking i wasn't really focusing on the cameos in this movie because i want to miss anything important like a like a small plot detail or whatever I'm glad I didn't do that because I'm watching this movie and I'm seeing, I'm noticing that Spider Punk was like grabbing random tech as they're walking up to uh, Miguel. And I'm thinking, I think he's about to make a device out of that stuff. And then I was right, he did it. But I didn't expect him to actually be more more of a important character than what he like looked like from the start. And pretty much he uh, made the tech for, for Gwen or whoever needed it most and he sent it to Gwen's father and Gwen gets the tech from him, goes to other, other universes recruiting other Spider-Man variants to team up to get Miles back and pretty much stand their ground against Miguel and stuff. And oh yeah, and then back to Miles, we learned that Miles, yeah, like he's in a whole different universe and we see that his uncle Aaron is still alive and his father is the one that passed away in this universe and we get the reveal of his variant, right? But his variant isn't like, you know, some innocent young man or whatever. He's a freaking prowler. And he sleeps Miles Morales, right? And you would think that his Spartans would go off. No, his Spartans did not go off because it's pretty much a pretty obvious answer that his Spartans probably doesn't go off against himself, like another variant of himself. So that's like the easiest answer anybody can come up with. And he's pretty much stuck there and they have him chained up questioning them and they all know that hey we know you're not me and he mentioned how uh his dad's going to die and he's like that's not my dad that's your dad and then it's like it's like damn it's, he's like he's really stuck in a in a corner now and it's like he's it's like it's so much it was so much stuff happening you know and i'm like dang they're doing a lot and it it had that to be continued I'm like, dang, and then my whole theater was like, ah, oh, come on, and then it didn't hit me that well because I pretty much saw it coming, but same time, I was like, that ending was freaking crazy, and I really liked it. Man, I'm pretty hyped for the next movie because of that ending, man. They, they pulled an Attack on Titan final season, part three, conclusion arc, part one. 
I will get into why it's called that, but the thing is, the moral story is this cliffhanger was crazy. Like on par with one of my favorite animes of all time, which is Attack on Titans. That has so many episodes with crazy cliffhangers. Uh, what else comes to mind? Oh yeah, so like I said earlier, I wasn't trying to look at every single cameo that was on the screen. I was gonna save that for when I rewatched the movie in theaters. But um, I did notice, I noticed a PS4 Spider-Man, that was pretty obvious right there. But I high key kind of geeked out. When they showed Spectacular Spider-Man, I'm like, yo, that's Spectacular Spider-Man. What the, what the fuck? Like that shit was pretty cool to see right there. I saw a Spider-Man from one of my favorite cartoons growing up, which was Spectacular Spider-Man. Um, I don't know how I don't know how people feel about Ultimate Spider-Man, but I kind of hope he's in the movie as like a cameo. Hope I see him. Uh, what's the scene? I seen Spider-Man Unlimited. Um, uh, okay, so I don't know if I'm tripping, but I saw a Spider-Man variant. Right, <laughs> he looked like Franklin from GTA 5, but you know, it had the ma the Spider-Man mask on. I don't know if I'm tripping, but when I see this movie in theaters, I'm gonna make sure that I'm not tripping because he literally had the same fit as Franklin, but had, you know, the Spider-Man mask on or whatever. And it was like so many Spider-Mans in there. I wasn't really trying to keep track of them because I didn't want to miss anything important. But um, what else, what else? There's so much more I could talk about this movie, but I don't want to make this video too long. So yeah. So, if you like the video, like what I, uh, you know, I said in this video, you should definitely like the video, subscribe, check out the channel. I have a variety of videos have uploaded and more to come in the future and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. So, I'm very good for this movie. Cannot wait for a Beyond the Spider-Verse. I'm hyped. I'm ready to watch it. I'm glad that I had to wait like 50 years for it. Now we only wait like one year for it. But other than that, that's the video. See ya.